السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا والنبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استن بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله 
وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة My dear respected brothers in Islam as always I begin by humbly requesting by humbly requesting that you turn off these electronic devices cell phones and pagers which have a tendency to ring at the most inopportune time and disturb us during our ibadah and as always I begin by asking that you open your ears your minds and your hearts to what I'm about to say brothers and sisters in our last sermon, we spoke about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has devoted the greater part of Surat al Hujurat to the subject of achieving Muslim unity and fostering a cohesive Muslim community. How Allah in this surah He counsels the Muslims about interpersonal relations and warns them against words and deeds that sow division and cause the believers who should love one another to despise one another instead. I want to pause and say I would very much appreciate if you have a device, if you put the device away and focus on the khutbah. And I'm not talking about someone who's trying to record. I'm talking about someone who has some type of text conversation that's going back and forth and the phone is in the pocket, out of the pocket, in the pocket. If you're distracted, if you have important affairs that you have to attend to, there's limited space and someone could take the space that you're not using appropriately at the, at the, at the, at the current time. So if you're going to listen to the khutbah, ahla wa sahla. If not, that space that you're taking and not using it for what's supposed to be used for at this hour could be used by someone else. So we spoke about last week how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah, Surah Al-Hujurat, He counsels the Muslims on their interpersonal relations and warns them against these words and deeds which can sow division and cause the Muslims who are supposed to love one another to despise one another instead. Last week we contemplated the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits the Muslims from being overly suspicious of one another. And today, we're going to reflect upon the verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, يَا إِيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُسِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُسْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Allah, he says, what means, O oh, you who believe, if a person of questionable character brings you some news, before taking action, ascertain the truth of what has been relayed, lest you harm some people out of ignorance and are forced to regret what you have done. The scholars of Tusiya, brothers and sisters, they mentioned that this verse was revealed regarding Al-Walid ibn Uqbah ibn Abi Mu'id, Al-Harith ibn Dirar al khuzai and his tribesmen from the clan of Bani Al-Mustalaq. Al-Harith, when he accepted Islam, the Prophet promised him that in the coming year, at a specific time in the coming year, he would send a representative to collect his zakat and the zakat of his fellow tribesmen who had accepted al Islam. When that appointed time came and passed, and no one had come to collect their zakat, Al Harith and his tribesmen became concerned. They feared that somehow, some way, they had fallen out of favor 
with Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or they had somehow angered Allah. Because they were so concerned, they all decided we're going to go to al Madinah together. We're going to present our zakat in person. And we're going to beg Allah's pardon from Allah's Messenger for whatever we may have done to incur His anger or the anger of Allah. Unbeknownst to them, at the very same time, the Prophet ﷺ had appointed Walid ibn Uqba and Walid ibn Uqba to go and collect the zakat from Bani al-Mustalaq. Perhaps unaware that previously at Walid ibn Uqba and Bani Mustalaq there was some hostility between them prior to Islam in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance and jahiliyyah. And Walid, he went. And at the same time, al Harith and his tribesmen are muqbilin. They're coming towards al Medina. When al Walid approached the territory of Ben Mustalik, he saw al Harith and his tribesmen coming from the distance. They were all armed. But back then, everyone was always armed. But al Walid, he became afraid. And he thought that they intended to kill him. So he turned back, went hurriedly back to the Messenger of Allah. And when he reached him, he said, In al Harith, man'ani al Zakat, wa arad qatli. He said, Harith, O Messenger of Allah, he refused to give me his Zakat. And he tried to kill me. The Messenger of Allah, sallam, upon hearing this, he assembled a platoon of men and dispatched them to confront Al Hadith and his tribesmen from Bani Mustalaq. When the true groups met face to face, Al Hadith inquired, he said, Ila man To whom have you been sent? They said, Ilaik, we've been sent to you. Qala walima. He said, Why? Why have you been sent to me? They said, Because the messenger of the messenger of of the messenger of Allah, the representative of Rasulullah, he came to you. And he claimed that you refused to surrender your zakat and you tried to kill him. Whereupon Al Hadith he replied, he said, La walladhi ba'atha Muhammadin bil haqq. He said, No, I swear by Allah, the one who has sent Muhammad with the truth. Ma ra'aytuhu al batta. Wala atani. Wala ra'ani. He said, I swear by Allah, this man never came to us. We never met him. He never saw us. And we never saw. We never saw him. And it was then. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he revealed, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, in jaakum fasiqum binabayin, fatabayyanu, and to see bu oman bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma faaltum nadimin. Oh, you who believe. If a person of questionable credibility comes to you with some news, ascertain the truth before acting upon it. Before you harm someone out of ignorance and are forced to repent. For the wrong that you have done. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. O you who believe. Allah prefaces the verse with these words to indicate to all of us that if we are truly believers, we will do as he instructs. And we will not act upon information which is less than credible before first verifying its truthfulness and accuracy. If we really believe, this is how we'll behave. Oh, you will believe. In ja'akum fasiqun bidabayin. If a person of questionable character brings you some news. The word brothers and sisters use in the Arabic is fasiq, which literally means someone who has exceeded the legal limits and gone outside the boundaries of obedience. And Walid, he spoke based upon his perception, which turned out not to be consistent with reality, making what he said untrue. Therefore, in this case, not generally, in this case,
his credibility was in question. And therefore, his report should have been investigated and scrutinized, which is, which is why the subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَبَيَّنُ Confirm, ascertain the truth. al Qur'a, some of the reciters, the credible reciters, they recite the verse, فَتَبَيَّنُ which means scrutinize. Confirm the truth of the report, investigate. But other reciters, they read it, فَتَثَبَّتُ Deliberate. Take your time. Don't be hasty in acting until the truth becomes evidently clear. Both meanings, brothers and sisters, are intended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us, brothers and sisters, Whenever we hear some news from less than credible sources, he wants us to confirm the report and avoid rushing to judgment. Why? أَن تُسِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُسْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Lest you harm some people out of ignorance and are forced to regret what you have done. Because, brothers and sisters, when we rush to judgment, and we judge incorrectly, some people are likely to be harmed in the process. And damage will be done, which is difficult to undo. Difficult or sometimes impossible to undo. This harm and this damage that we do because we judge in haste is a sin. A sin from which we'll have to repent if we hope to be forgiven by Allah. But this sin and this damage and this harm, all of it can be avoided if we simply do as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us to do. If we verify and confirm the reports and always ascertain the truth before speaking or acting. Brothers and sisters, Unfortunately, it is part of man's nature to gossip and to spread unsubstantiated rumors. And the Muslim community is not exempt or immune from this. We also live in an era of tremendous misinformation and disinformation. These factors make it incredibly critical for us as Muslims to apply Allah's advice in this surah and investigate and confirm the truth of reports before spreading them or acting upon them. This verse also teaches us, brothers and sisters, to avoid making assumptions or believing whatever is said about a person or people good or bad, simply because we personally feel that way about them or based purely upon how we personally feel about them. Oh, people are saying this and because I like him, it's true. People are saying this and because I don't like him, it's true. We never do that. We never jump to, we never make these assumptions and we never believe what people are saying just because it agrees with how we already feel about them. We may have an idea about a person or some people. Just like at Walid, he had an idea about al Harith and his tribesmen from Bani and Mustalaq. But before we speak about that idea, before we spread that idea or act upon that idea, we need to first confirm that what we think is true. What we believe about that person or those people is actually right. If we fail to do this, brothers and sisters, then we will be unable to achieve, foster a cohesive Muslim community. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He wants us to foster a cohesive Muslim community. He doesn't want us to be a bunch of individuals who come to the same place on Friday only or a bunch of people from different countries who create their own sub-communities 
But when we come together as a collective, we're not really a community. We're disjointed. Allah doesn't want us to be like that. And He wants to remove all the obstacles which will prevent us from achieving that. And one of those obstacles is this obstacle. And we just accept anything, we hear it, and we do what? We regurgitate it. People are saying things, and we what? We repeat it without first verifying. Allah knows this is a landmine capable of destroying the Muslim community. That's why he tells us, brothers and sisters, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, in ja'akum fasiqum binaba'in, fatabayyadu. An tusibu qawman bi jahalatin, fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimeen. Oh, you will believe if a person of questionable character brings you some news before taking any action, ascertain the truth of what has been relayed lest you harm some people out of ignorance and are forced to regret what you have done. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim. Wa naf'ani wa yaakum bima fihi man layati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Aqoolu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullahi li wa lakum astaghfiru innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. Allahumma izin islam wa muslimin. Wa adil al-shirka wa al-mushrikin. Wa dammir a'adaaka a'adaa al-millati wa al-deen. Wa ansur ibadaka al-muwahideen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma man aradana. أو أراد ديننا أو إخوان المسلمين في أي مكان بسوء فأشغله في نفسه واجعل كيده في نحر واجعل تدبيره تدميرا عليه يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم آتي أنفسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا ذات النار وقوموا إلى صلاتكم الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قد أقامت الصلاة قد أقامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله just want to remind the brothers to look to your left and to your right and make sure you're in line with the person to your left and to your right. Obviously, we're praying with social distancing, but that doesn't mean we don't have to keep the rows straight. So we want to try to make sure that our, you know, our bodies are not behind or in front of the person to our left or to our right. We're trying to make a straight line as best as we can. Just like Mujir. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم والضالين آمين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم
الجحيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إن فصل لربك وانهر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر So 